nice probability question, and as they often are, it's about counters in a bag. So we've got Y counters. X of them are pink, five are blue, and the rest are green. We get a really crucial bit of information that the ratio of X to Y is one to three. And what we'd like to do is find the probability that we pick two counters of the same color. Also really important is that there's no replacement in this problem. Once you take a counter out of the bag, it's gone. We forget about it. Okay then, so for this problem, before we do any probability thinking, we would like to sort out this X, 5, the rest being green, and the Y. So let's do some thinking first of all. The ratio of X to Y is 1 to 3, so that means straight away we can write this really key fact, and that's this, Y equals 3X. The reason this is helpful is it gets rid of us having more than one variable. We've just got X now. Okay, well we should also think about this. We've got X pink ones, five blue and the rest being green. That means we can say, we take our X plus five, and I'm gonna put plus green here. I mean the number of green counters x plus 5 plus green, that has to add up to our total of y counters, which we now know is the same thing as 3x. So what I can write is those are adding up to give us the same as 3x. And a little bit of simplification here, we can cross an x out of both sides. So we've got 5 plus green equals 2x. And to make that a bit more nice, we'd like to make green the subject. So green is going to be 2x minus 5. I'm just going to write down here this as g is 2x subtract 5. Okay, so that's really, really nice for us actually. Because if we now think about what we've got, so we've got everything in terms of x. We've got X pink counters, five blue counters, and now two X minus five green counters. We're now ready to start thinking about probability then. The probability of picking two of the same counter. For this, we'd like to use a tree diagram. And because there's three options, our tree is going to look like this. So one, two, three for our first choice. And on our second choice, we've got one, two, three, one, two, three, and then the third, one, two, three. Let's think about what these actual trees are going to look like. So on our first one, we can think pink, blue, and green for our three choices. So we'll label those with a P, B and a G. And likewise on the second one, we've got the same three choices. So pink, blue, and green. Pink, blue, and green. Pink, blue, and green. Now let's start giving them some numbers. And this is not going to be a probability tree, it's going to be a frequency tree at the moment. Just saying, well, how many counters are pink, blue, and green? We're going to think about the probability afterwards. On my first pick, there are X pink counters. So I'm going to put an X there. How many blue are there? Well, there was five. How many green are there? Well, we worked out earlier it's 2X take away five. To save us a bit of time here, we don't have to fill out the entire tree. Because we just want the probability of two counters being the same colour, we can just worry about those branches of our tree. If I picked out a pink counter on the first go, and I didn't replace it because there's no replacement in this problem, I've just lost a pink counter. 
So instead of x on the next one, I'm going to have x minus 1. I lost a pink counter. This makes this even more clear when we have a look at the blues. I used to have 5, but I picked one out and didn't replace it, so now I've got 4. And when we think about the greens, we have to be really careful with this one. We used to have 2x minus 5 greens. We picked one out. Now we've got 2x minus 6 greens. When I first saw this problem, I really wanted to write 2x minus 4, but 2x minus 6 is 1 less than 2x minus 5. Okay, then we're thinking about the combinations here that are going to get us what we want. We can either choose this one and this one, or we can choose this one and this one, or we can choose this one and this one. They are all three options that get us two of the same colour. So what we should do is write down two of the same Those are our three combinations. Now we have to start thinking about a bit of algebra that's going to get our answer in the form that we like. And our first thing to think is when we've got three options, we've got an OR statement, and that means we're adding something up, doesn't it? So we've got x multiplied by x minus 1, because when you go along the tree, we're timesing together. And because we could have that or this, we're adding up. So our next one would be 5 times 4. Or, so another add, we could have the third option, which is 2x minus 5 and 2x minus 6. 2x minus 5 multiplied by 2x minus 6. And here's the part where we have to now think about the denominator that we like. And it might not be obvious at first, but we need to think about the total number of counters that we've got. So if we think about our total, well, at first it was y counters in our bag. And we have to think a bit back to think, oh yeah, y was the same as 3x. So we had 3x on throw number one, or picking the first counter out. And for the second one, we have to take one counter away because we lost one when we took it out. So we're going to have 3x minus 1 on our second. What that means for us is that for each of these, the denominator would be out of 3x on the first and out of 3x minus 1 on the second throw. So let's add those in and then we'll think about what, how we can combine them all together. So x would have been out of 3x, x minus 1 would have been out of 3x minus 1. Likewise, for 5 times 4, we're going to have 3x and 3x minus 1. And for this one, the same thing, 3x brackets 3x minus 1. Well, luckily for us here, let me make a line so we're not going to get overlapping. Three fractions, they've all got the same denominator, so we can combine them into one fraction with that common denominator. So we've got x, x minus 1, can simplify this 5 times 4 straight away to a plus 20. And on our third one, we've got 2x minus 5, 2x minus 6. And it's all over 3x, 3x minus 1. Okay, well at this point we're actually almost there. We'd like to simplify this big expression to find our probability. Well, thinking about doing this, we just need to expand out the brackets and then we should be there. So x brackets x minus 1 is going to get us x squared minus x. Our plus 20 stays the same. Expanding out these brackets, we've got 2x times 2x to get us 4x squared. We've got a minus 5 times 2x, that's minus 10x. 
minus 6 times 2x could be minus 12x. So we should have minus 22x and then minus 5 times minus 6 to get us plus 30. Expanding out the bottom should get us ooh, 3 times 3x to get 9x squared. And 3x times minus 1 would be minus 3x. This looks pretty good to me. Finishing off then, this is our very last thing to do, just gathering up some like terms. I've got an x squared plus a 4x squared. So we've got 5x squared. I've got a minus x minus 22x. So that will give us minus 23x. And I've got plus 20 plus 30 to get us plus 50. And on the bottom, we can just leave it as 9x squared minus 3x. A really, really messy, long expression, but this tells us the probability of picking two balls of the same colour.